So normally I start with, you know, questions of how my guests got into the adult industry, but you did some things before getting into the industry that I want to get into first because they're so interesting. Um, so random. Starting with your time <laughs> in wilderness camps. Yes. How did you get into that and what was that like? So I started as a field guide at, for wilderness therapy programs when I was 24. It was kind of my get out of my home state card. Mm -hmm. I knew a few people who had done it and I knew that it was a way to go live outside basically full time, which was very appealing to me. And, you know, I they say in those programs, a lot of the people that are called to teach at them have a lot of work they need to do on themselves and are attracted to these therapy programs because they're benefiting from them too, which is so true. And yeah, I worked at a I worked at a program that I thought was very lovely and was very beneficial for the kids there. But obviously the industry has caught a lot of flack, especially recently. I think um, Paris Hilton's documentary was a big, um, uh, really amplified like the voices of people who have been really harmed by some of the camps because it's mm -hmm. a really deregulated industry, mm. which is a big issue, obviously, because mm -hmm. you're holding minors at like camps, mm -hmm. like gotta, I don't know, it, sh it should be more regulated, but. I loved the program I worked for. Um, it's it's a program where they really emphasized natural consequences as opposed to programs that are what's called behavioral modification. Mm -hmm. So at those programs, they do like rewards and punishments for different behaviors that the kids do. But at our program, they were really strong about um, basically letting the kids behave how they want mm -hmm. and then letting the natural consequences of the group and of being outside all the time like kind of handle the rewards and punishments instead of like taking that on yourself and that was very interesting for me because i wasn't really raised like that you know mm -hmm. so it was really cool to see how that sense of responsibility was really just instilled in these kids and it made them really want to be good people intrinsically instead of like forcing them to act mm -hmm. a certain way so like how do you mean so like say that so the program kind of works like most days you're hiking to like a new spot. It's a nomadic program. There's not like a home base. So say you leave camp really late one day because a kid is like, ha like doesn't want to hike. They're like throwing a tantrum and they're like, I'm not hiking today. So then the whole camp gets to, the whole group gets to camp like hours late, maybe in the middle of the night when you're not supposed to get there. Maybe you can't find your food because of that. And then everyone's like kind of mad at this kid because they're like, you could have just cooperated, but instead of I thought you were through... just gonna fucking leave him there. <laughs> I mean, that's Later. a natural consequence. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to uh, Amanda? She got eaten by a mountain lion. <laughs> Natural consequence. I left her behind. She had it coming. Totally she had it coming. Eh? You know, <laughs> nature. What can you do? <laughs> but yeah, and you know, nature. They say that nature is like ninety percent of the program. So that takes a lot of the responsibility off the staff to like be this perfect person. It's like you just need to like show up, be the best that you can be, and like being outside and being in this peaceful place and being kind of forced to reflect on yourself when you don't have all these like distractions of mm -hmm. everyday life. Like it's just, it was so good for the kids. Like it was such a rewarding job, like really the most rewarding job I think I've ever had where you just see people change so quickly. Yeah. And like really become a part of a community. It was yeah. Cool. That's really great. Yeah. Do you have any like crazy stories from that camp? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah. So, oh God. Definitely, like, I had, like, one student that stands out as, like, for sure the wildest. It was, like, one of my very last shifts. And she, like, came in guns blazing. It was a kid who had been to, like, more than 10 programs before this, like, really struggled and had not found one that had been helpful. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of at the point where you're like, why do her parents keep sending her to camps at this point? Mm -hmm. Like, but she seemed to change a lot during our program. That being said, this story kind of negates that a little bit, but <laughs> when she showed up, she definitely like weaponized her bloody tampon, which was new one for me. She like took it out, threw it at staff. Like that was wild. I was like, oh my God. And she like calmed down a lot during the course of her stay, but this is so, this is so insane. Okay, so 
we get like fresh food uh, once or twice a week. I can't oh, remember how often. Fuck, dude, I know and where this is going. You know where it's going. But did you know that it's a jalapeno? It's not a cucumber. It's not a carrot. It's a jalapeno. So yeah, basically this kid used this jalapeno to masturbate, and the staff found out about it, and they were like, "Wait, no, that that's not oh, where I thought that it not was going. Where I thought it was wrong. going. <laughs> I thought that's was... where it went. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> Tell your. Let me not try to predict what you're going to say. Tell your story because that is not. <laughs> So that I, happened once, and then we were like, don't do that. And then okay, we, so hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay, because I was picturing, like, <laughs> she was putting tampons in the food. <laughs> That's where I thought you were going. But clearly, no, you were not going there at all. So fresh food, she decides to masturbate with a jalapeno. Yeah, and we were like, don't. Did she, like, put it b- like, how did you know? I, kn- I know because she told one of the other students and the students told us. Because they were like, this sounds dangerous. And we were like, that is probably dangerous. Did she put it, like, back in the food? So they, you all get, like, your own fresh produce and you, like, keep it in your backpack, right? And you can, like, eat it throughout the week if you save it. Or you can eat it all at once. You know, it's kind of your and decision. And then starve consequences. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, she used it to masturbate again after that. Like, it was like, she was about to leave the program and I think she was, like maybe acting out a little bit, like was nervous, but she, it, it broke inside of her. This was on my shift. We were supposed to do this really cool hike that day where we were going to these like ruins. And instead we had to like wait for a douche to be delivered to our group in the middle of the desert. Cause she was like freaking out. Like there were seeds inside of her. It was, it was, it was insane. <laughs> Truly insane. God, we talk about like spicy content. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like when we want to say that, like something's on your OnlyFans, but you can't say OnlyFans because you're on fucking Instagram. You're like, check out my spicy page with a jalapeno. Like that girl literally was very literal about that. Oh my god! I also I had this awesome shift. It was like all it was in the adult group, which they're still really young. They're just over eighteen, but it was all girls. And like I think like a couple days in, we all realized that everyone in the group was like either gay or bisexual. And I didn't know this till after my shift, but all of the girls were like hooking up at night. I was like, guys, you weren't supposed to be doing that. That's bad. <laughs> but also I would have done the same thing at your age. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Man. What a year. <laughs> that, that jalapeno story was, I did not, that was not what I thought. No one saw that one coming. Wow. <laughs> Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better. <laughs>